A top official from Tokyo Electric Power Company says he does not think the situation at Fukushima Daiichi is under control. His statement comes amid new concerns that radioactive water at the stricken uh, nuclear plant may have reached the ocean. Leaders of Japan's main opposition are now demanding answers from the government, particularly the prime minister. NHK World's Masaki Otake reports. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe spoke with confidence before the International Olympic Committee. Let me assure you, the situation is under control. What the fuck? But a top TEPCO official appears to have contradicted his words. At a meeting organized by the opposition Democratic Party, Kazuhiko Yamashita said he does not believe the company is on top of the problems at the crippled nuclear plant. Yamashita said what's happening there goes beyond what TEPCO officials could foresee. 300 tons of radioactive water leaked from a storage tank at Fukushima Daiichi last month. Workers are still trying to determine how far that water has spread. Samples taken earlier this week from a location 30 meters from the sea showed 80 becquerels per liter of cesium-137. That's close to what the government says can safely be discharged into the sea. Tokyo! Yeah! Prime Minister Abe's assurances on nuclear safety helped Tokyo secure the 2020 Olympics. Now Democratic Party Secretary General Akihiro Ohata says Abe should be held to his words. Prime Minister Abe should fully explain to the people of Fukushima and Japan the reasons behind his declaration that the situation at Fukushima Daiichi is under control. He has to follow through on his promise. DPJ President Bauri Kayeda says he'll call on all opposition parties to cooperate and bring up the subjects at an extraordinary session of the Diet. But the Abe administration is playing it down. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga says he doesn't think the situation at Fukushima Daiichi is different from what the Prime Minister told the IOC. But others who visited the plant say the problems are severe. On Thursday, a U.S. plant expert who led cleanup efforts after the Three Mile Island nuclear disaster said the problems at Fukushima Daiichi are far more complex than the U.S. plant. And with new information about the severity of the radioactive water leaks coming out every day, pressure is mounting on the government to deal with the issue. Masaki Otake, NHK World, Tokyo. Engineers at Japan's crippled nuclear plant have made a worrying discovery. They've been digging into the ground at the Fukushima Daiichi site to try to track leaks of contaminated wastewater. They say a monitoring well near a storage tank contains sharply rising levels of the radioactive element tritium. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company reported the findings. They say the level of tritium in water samples from the well rose on Thursday to 130,000 becquerels per liter. That's more than twice the level at which Japanese nuclear plants are allowed to release water into the ocean. A storage tank leaked more than 300 tons of highly radioactive water last month. That water probably seeped into the soil. Engineers dug the monitoring well 20 meters from the tank and started taking samples of groundwater. The tritium level in those samples was 64,000 becquerels per liter on Tuesday and rose to 97,000 on Wednesday. Company officials say they suspect the water leak last month caused the increase but can't be certain. They're also trying to figure out whether past leaks from pipes had any effect. Officials with the industry ministry are trying to find a better way to deal with the growing amount of radioactive water at the plant. They're putting out a call at home and abroad for technology that could help. They decided on a plan on Friday during a meeting with scientists. They're seeking methods to build watertight storage tanks and quickly detect any leaks. 
They're also looking for ways to capture tritium. The new decontamination device that's expected to be built can't remove the radioactive element. Ministry officials say they plan to put an announcement on their website in November, giving more details on what they require. The scientists advising them estimate that if no measures are taken, the amount of contaminated water at Fukushima Daiichi could increase more than five times to 1.7 million tons in eight years. One year ago, I took a ride on this very train line. Scars of the disaster lined the tracks. Students rely on this train to get to and from school. Elderly people really need it too. Twelve months later, they have company. Moving from place to place isn't the only attraction. A local specialty, sea urchin, is served atop a bowl of rice. The food was unavailable right after the disaster. Now the supply is recovering and making its way on board. <laughs> the event train is sold out every weekend. Residents are seizing the opportunity to show what the Sandiku Coast has to offer. These female divers called ama work without oxygen tanks. They practice traditional fishing in summer as their predecessors have for more than a century. Their main catch is sea urchin, the delicacy served on the train. Last month alone, 50,000 tourists visited the area. That's more than 20 times the number last year. I was impressed by the depth the experienced divers reach. It's quite lovely. <laughs> the divers are committed to smiling for the visitors, but getting to this point has been a struggle, overcoming one hardship after another. Their base facility had just been completed in 2010. The tsunami of 2011 tore it to pieces. All that was left in the port was debris and dead sea urchins. I kept thinking, what if another big quake comes? I was also worried about what kind of debris I might find in the sea. When I saw the port flattened, I felt hopeless. But after a while, I came around and realized doing something is better than doing nothing. The women got back to diving several months after the disaster. These days they're often joined by high school students, inspired by their example. I hope to help reinvigorate my hometown. We lost many things to the disaster, but I feel we've gained something beyond what we lost. NHK has obtained new information that suggests North Korean leaders may have restarted a mothballed nuclear reactor. Diplomatic sources say higher than normal levels of radioactive materials have been detected near the eastern coast of the Korean peninsula. The sources say readings taken by South Korean military personnel late last month show a spike in levels of radioactive xenon in the air. This week, researchers in the U.S. published their analysis of satellite images of the nuclear facility in Yeonbyon, North Korea. The images from the end of August show what appears to be white steam rising from a building near the reactor. The structure apparently houses steam turbines for power generation. The North Koreans disabled the reactor in 2007 under an agreement reached in the six-party talks on their nuclear program. Authorities in Pyongyang have recently shown more interest in holding international dialogue. But a senior U.S. diplomat points out they continue to assert their nuclear status. Glyn Davis says more work is needed before the six-party talks can resume. The negotiations have been suspended for nearly five years.
Apocalyptic trash You might think he's dead But the book is coming true is coming true when it's happening their banks are corrupt Establishment quake I wanna say I'm